Hello and welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, we are going to learn how to use all those advanced pivot table techniques and tips that you have seen so far to create a business dashboard. Now I'll do a small show and tell, which is I'll display the dashboard and then we'll jump back into the presentation to go through a few slides and then we will go into Excel. So this is the dashboard that uh, we will be creating. It will show the call center performance report for 2019 with some summary information on the left hand side and some detailed information that is shown by manager level. So you could switch to either Bob or Gina and then see what's happening at their level. You can also visualize various types of trend like talk time or amounts, etc. Let's go back to the presentation here uh, and uh, first quickly understand what are the steps necessary to create the dashboard. Now, apart from knowing all the advanced pivot table techniques, you also need to have some clarity on how to make a dashboard. So this is a nutshell design process for whenever you want to create a dashboard, which is you want to start with defining some information goals, like what should this dashboard achieve? What kind of information it should provide? Who should be viewing this dashboard and uh, how it will help them with their day-to-day -day business? And then we make a mock-up of the dashboard. This will give you a visual guideline on what is it that you are going to create. And then we will work on our data and a number crunching. This is where all the power query and pivot table tips that you have seen will come in handy. And then we will make a visuals, which is where uh, we will be using pivot charts as much as possible uh, in, along with some conditional formatting. And we will also have some interactions so that the users can ask questions to the data, like, you know, what is it for this manager or what is it for this type of data? And those interactions are achieved with the usually slicers or timelines or sometimes even form controls. And finally, we want to have a clean, neat formatting applied on top so that it all looks good and interesting. So that's the design process. Uh, let's go and uh, get up, get the information goals ready. Uh, this is where a lot depends on what is the dashboard that you are designing and who will be reading it. Accordingly, you will have the goals defined. Now, pretty much 99% of the dashboards would have a two-level hierarchy in, in the information goals. That is a summary section and a detail section because this is how humans, uh, we like to read information as well. We want to see the important bits first, which go into summary and then get into detail to ask some extra questions. So usually whenever uh, you have dashboard goals, you also want to identify what are the summary goals and what are the detail goals. Now for our purpose, we can imagine that a summary information could be what happened uh, with respect to calls, amounts, duration, uh, that is stop time and what percentage of calls are really long, let's say more than 60 seconds or whatever, and what percentage of calls have zero amount, that is um, calls where there was no amount and people are still talking. Then at the detail level, we could imagine uh, the whole detail section having a manager perspective. So we will view the details for, for each manager or select both of them to see the overall company detail. And we want to see by individual representatives under that manager, how many calls they have taken in, in that particular year and what is the customer demographics, like, you know, what kind of people are calling and uh, some sort of annual trend by month. Now, needless to mention, whenever you have these kind of goals defined, you should also have a clarity on what is the reporting window of the or analysis window. This is when you say, is it going to be a daily report or a monthly report or an annual report or whatever, and then define that window. So for the purpose of our analysis, we shall assume that this is going to be a annual performance scorecard kind of thing. So we create it and we uh, use use the current data to understand what's happening and then look back in time to compare and, and see the changes with respect to that. And maybe, you know, if uh, you can take it further and you use forecasting or those kind of analytics to predict what's going to happen next year. Of course, we won't be doing the forecasting bit, but we will do everything else. 
So once the goals are defined, then you will go and create a mockup. Now this is where it doesn't really have to get any technical. You can draw a sketch on a paper, which is exactly what I've done for this particular dashboard when I was preparing. But then I went ahead and translated that into PowerPoint so that you can show you how it looks. So that's what you would do in a mockup stage. You will have a summary and detail section, obviously. So I would imagine each taking up one box in the dashboard summary being a smaller section will have a, a small tall box that is going on the left hand side and detail will go here that's that's one way of looking at it alternatively you could also have summary on the top and detail further down this all depends on how much space is there and where this dashboard is usually consumed so if it is going to be on a screen because screens tend to be wider than they are taller uh, this approach will work where you have summary on the left hand side detail on the right hand side if it is going to be printed out on an a4 kind of a sheet because they are taller than they are wider uh, you may want to have summary on the top and detail further down in the detail section i would imagine there will be three big boxes one is having representatives information one is having demographics and the third one will have annual trend so that's all uh, at this point we can jump into the data let's go back into the excel file here uh, and uh, the good thing for us is we already have the data model set up. Uh, remember, we used uh, one pivot from two files example file uh, here. And, and in that example, I've shown you how to take the 2018 data and combine that with 2019 data using Power Query and load it into the data model. So this one already has uh, that uh, data model and um, to kind of because we have already covered all the techniques required to build various components of this i will quickly do a show and tell rather than reconstruct this from scratch so there is a big text box on the top which has call center performance reports 2019 this is just a text box with some text typed in and formatted so that it has some nice uh, colors and shadows and then uh, on the left hand side here uh, these numbers are showing the summary of what happened in 2019. So to get all these numbers, now usually we had like 4,618 calls in 2019. Now, by alone, that number doesn't mean much. So whenever you have numbers like this, it's a good idea to contrast that with something else. So here I've taken 2018 number and showed that um, and then I've indicated as a percentage icon that this has gone up 37%. This is a very good way of presenting such such data. And we continued that pattern for all of these um, other things okay now let's go ahead and see how these numbers themselves are calculated uh, all of these are done with pivot tables here i have set up a pivot table here that will simply list call count um, duration long calls purchase amount and zero amount calls now we already know how to calculate call count and uh, some of duration and some of purchase amount those were uh, the measures that uh, that we kind of created earlier uh, but uh, what about um, you know number of long calls so this is actually a measure that i've added uh, which is i'm just gonna edit this measure so we can see so here uh, is how we do this which is uh, we use a special uh, formula in dax called calculate now it is fairly out of scope uh, for for this particular video to get into the details of what calculate is but um, keep in mind that what calculate does is it calculates a number like call count by adding some extra conditions on top the condition is a really law, wrong way of saying this uh, this is actually having a, a filter on the data but uh, we can imagine this as being a condition so what we are doing is we are calculating how many calls were there where the duration of the call is greater than 90 seconds so that's the definition of a long call and uh, and we are calculating that uh, same goes for zero amount calls which is calculate call count where purchase amount happens to be zero so this is another way of uh, doing the call count and that will give me how many zero amounts are there. So we added all these five measures and then we put them in the pivot tables, uh, add a year into the column and values uh, were shown up. And then percentage change from 2018 to 19 can be calculated outside uh, using um, 
this year divided by last year minus one kind of a very very simple arithmetic formula and this will give me that so once these numbers are all there we will just display them in the dashboard using a linked formula so this this is not a direct for uh, value it is actually linked to the output of the pivot table and then uh, we will kind of apply different fonts for them uh, and uh, apply conditional formatting icon uh, for for that number alone so it will have a green arrow when it is positive and red arrow when it is uh, negative so once you do this for one it's easy to just copy paste and change the references and apply different formatting so we can get uh, that and as you could see from 2018 to 19 pretty much everything has gone up um, for example we have 37 percent more calls but we do have 111 percent more long calls so customers are speaking longer to us this year compared to last year and even zero dollar calls they have gone up by 117 percent okay and then on the right hand side we are looking at a call count by reps and gender this is again a very very simple one we will first set up a pivot table that would have rep on the row label area gender on the column label area and call count here and then it's it's a simple matter of adding this uh, making this a uh, a pivot chart that's what that uh, that thing is it's a pivot chart uh, if you select that you would actually see the field label thing is here and then um, add a slicer for manager and link that to that pivot chart so once that slicer is there it will if you select something it will change those items it will also not only change the values but the representatives that are under that manager will will show up so that's that now another condition here is these are only things that happened in 2018 we don't sorry 2019 not uh, we don't want to see what happened in 2018 here so for that what i've done is i've added an extra slicer and selected that to 2019 for this pivot table okay in fact that slicer is linked to other pivot tables further down as well so that all of them show only 2019 numbers and then when it comes to customer demographics this is where i am using that um, that pivot table with the conditional formatting trick but rather than keeping the pivot table here because you know this tends to be a very um, tricky amount of space to work with when you are uh, making a dashboard so i first created a pivot table here that gives me call count and long calls by gender and education um for everyone and then i took all these numbers i kind of made them here as a reference so everything is linking back to that uh, pivot table calculations uh, pivots for dashboard worksheet and applied conditional formatting only for the uh, cell underneath um, normally when we were creating things in the pivot table we were able to kind of resize the row but since the dashboard has uh, if i resize this particular row it would actually make that space also uneven compared to the other things on the top so what i did is i kind of um, added a white colored box it's not really white it's the background color box uh, so that uh, we we think these bars are smaller but this just actually uh, there is a real thing going on so that's the that's that technique and then i've added some extra borders with uh, line shapes and uh, uh, and then box shapes etc the final one is annual trend and for this uh, i've created a pivot table this is a massive pivot table that gives me by month and by year various values call count sum of duration long calls purchase amount zero amount calls for all 2018 and then 2019 since we could be comparing for anything right we could be comparing by amount we could be comparing by call count we could be doing talk time uh, we could be doing zero dollar calls so i could be doing any of those and i wanted to have uh, all of them in the pivot table and then what i did is i've set up a list of choices these are the choices and i used a a form control from the developer ribbon insert combo box form control we could use a slicer as well but uh, for combo box tend to be more compact so it would look really nice on a big dashboard uh, and then this one i have uh, went to format control and i've 
said that the inputs for these would be those five and the output needs to go into a cell like that. So what this does is it will give you those five choices and depending on what you pick, it will give you a number saying you picked the first choice or you picked the fourth one or you picked the fifth one, right? So once this form control is there, uh, it's actually linked to that cell. Uh, this is just used for demo here. Um, I'll delete this. And then uh, I figured out what that uh, thing is uh, using index formula and uh, I fetched the corresponding numbers using index formula. So if I want the fifth one, I'll get the fifth value. If I want uh, third one, I'll get the third value. So that's the values for 2018 and 19. And then from here, it's a simple matter of making a line chart with those uh, two sets of data. So now we have our two lines. One is 2018, one is 19. 2019 is in the green, uh, sorry, orange color. And then uh, further down, I've also calculated the totals and then I've created a label for the chart, which simply says what pers what is the uh, $0 calls, uh, what, what is the increase in that? And that's shown there. This is kind of a redundant thing because all of this information is available um, uh, in 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 other places, but uh, uh, this is specific to that manager. So whereas here at the overall level, the zero dollar calls went up by one hundred and seventeen percent. For Gina, they went up by one twenty two percent. So obviously, Bob must have been slightly lower. So that's it. And then after all of that, I've added some shadows and boxes uh, so that it kind of looks nice and crisp. And our dashboard is ready. I think uh, this uh, this is actually a very good example of what you can achieve assuming you have some of these advanced pivot table knowledge that is you know ability to take data from different places to mash them together into one giant data model ability to create uh, pivot charts and slicers that will help you have the interactivity uh, and ability to connect one slicer or or one um, timeline with multiple pivot tables or charts and then uh, finally uh, the ability to put together all of these in sync so that you can come up with a gorgeous display of information like this. So I hope you found this particular uh, video useful and this series in general very very helpful for improving your data analysis and reporting skills. Please check out the video description for full resources and access all the files. And if you want to learn more on how to analyze data, how to make a gorgeous dashboards or information displays, please consider my online Excel school program. Again, the information on that would be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye-bye.